Um, my name is Carrie Lyle. I'm, I'm editor of Diva magazine. I've been with the magazine for about five and a half years and I've been editor for almost two. Uh, Diva celebrates its 25 year anniversary in April actually. Um, so we launched in 1994 and we've got lots of exciting events planned this year to sort of celebrate you know, quite a monumental um, birthday for us really and, and for lesbian media because there aren't there isn't really anything else like us around um, not in the UK anyway and worldwide there's only a handful of magazines left so um, yeah anything that we can do to sort of celebrate and, and lift up lesbian media is really important. We're putting together this anniversary issue at the moment and it's been a really em emotional experience actually sort of reading over these old accounts and um, messages you know from from readers who've, who've you know bought the first issue and have stayed with us and also from former staffers and things and I think it's, it's amazing to me. The first editor, Frances Williams, was 26 when, when she sort of started Diva and she was working for Gay Times, um, or the publisher of the Gay Times at the time, and she went to them and said, can we have a magazine for women? And they were like, oh yeah, sure, why not? Um, and so it, it wasn't really started with any fanfare from what I can see, and yet the way it was received by the sort of lesbian community it was incredible, you know, people finally seeing themselves for the first time in a magazine. I can't imagine what that must have felt like. I mean, I can because I then, you know, when I was 16, sort of picked it up and, and had those same feelings. And we hear from people now who have those same feelings. But when there was nothing else around, you know, when you, you could have been in your 30s or 40s and lived your whole life and not seen yourself on TV in a, in a magazine. Yeah, I think I think if you look at some of the sort of mainstream women's magazines, I think there's been an effort to to be more inclusive, but it still very much feels like lip service to me. Um, it doesn't feel like they're telling our stories, or not authentically anyway. Um, and when they do, it feels almost like they're cashing in on a, on a moment um, or on a trend. Um, it's interesting when you look back to 1994 when Diva launched, you know, you had Katie Lang and Cindy Crawford on the cover of Vanity Fair and things, but it was very much a moment because lesbian was in. Um, but there wasn't, you know, no one's paying any attention to our rights or to our, um, our humanity. So that sort of sticks in my throat a little bit. It doesn't feel authentic, it doesn't feel genuine. Um, and more often than not, it feels very basic, the coverage. You know, it's things that we've been talking about for years and years and years at a much sort of deeper level. So, you know, while I'm glad to see that there is some progress being made, those women's magazines certainly don't speak to me um, and don't speak to our readers. And, and that's why I think we've we've lasted as long as we have, we're still around. And why we get letters and emails from straight women who say, I'm really sick of this, you know, these body shaming images or these diet adverts or, you know, there's how to please your man things. Diva is a space, not just for queer women, but for straight women who want a more sort of feminist media, I think. Um, and I think it's very limiting to think of our readers as just lesbians or just bi women. Um, so we're trying to reflect the diversity that already exists there. Um, for us, it's not a sort of marketing strategy. It's not, oh, well, you know, we need to sort of, you know, pay lip service to this, you know, buzzword of inter intersectionality. It's just that we all are all of these things. We're I think. Thinking of media as, as a whole, or, or perhaps outside of, of a magazine sphere, I do think it is, it's very limiting the kinds of representations that we see. So you might have more lesbians in soaps, for example, or um, you, know, you might have a, les a lesbian radio presenter or something like that, but it is very much like a palatable kind of representation, you know, often white, often um, quite inoffensive, uh, desexualized. You know, we don't see these kind of um, grey areas within ourselves, these kind of uh, nuances of our identities. Um, and that's a problem, I think. We need to see far richer representations of who we are and far um, deeper representations of who we are. I suppose we're lucky that we have the space within Diva to dive into those. Um, you might not have that in a half hour TV show or a you know, five minute radio segment. Um, so I feel, I feel privileged that we, you know, we can sort of get a bit deeper into the issues. I think what's worked well for us and, and what we could sort of continue to do is to allow people from minority backgrounds to tell their own stories. Um, so this year, for example, we t we've taken on an intersex columnist um, 
because it's really important that we, we tell intersex stories. But as a, you know, a cis person who isn't intersex, I don't feel like I have um, the expertise, the, the knowledge to tell that story in a really, or tell those stories in a really sort of nuanced way. Um, so it's important for us that, that people are, are given the platform and given the opportunity to tell their own story in their own voice. And I think from, from media generally, for, you know, whether it's BBC Three, Channel Four, you know, I think if you're commissioning something, ask a person from, from that background for, with those experiences to tell that story because it's always going to be far more authentic. Um, and, I, and I understand why, you know, I understand the motivation to try, you know, from my point of view, to I'll, I'll tell the story, I, I can do this, you know. But actually, I think it's it's knowing when to take a step back, and saying I'm not I'm not the right person to tell this, um, and then I think these days more and more we need to give we need to recognise our privilege, know when to step aside, and know when to, when to let someone else um, step up really.